1.4 million people, refugees, are now based uh, in uh, Uganda, uh, according to UNHCR. Mr. President, based on your experience and what you have seen, how can we in the future better avoid conflicts like we have seen uh, in South Sudan, between Ethiopia, Eritrea, uh, the unfolding and of the situation in Somalia, but also um, difficulties in DRC and etc. What can we do to make sure that this doesn't happen again in the future? Uh, what can be done is to understand the causes of these conflicts. Uh, in, with war, generally, there are what we call just wars and unjust wars. Between 1952 and 1994, you could characterize some of the wars in Africa as just wars. Because at that time, Africans were fighting for independence, and in some cases, they were fighting for democracy. 1952, where the Mau Mau in Kenya against British colonialism. Then you had the wars in Southern Africa against the Portuguese colonialists, against uh, Ian Smith. Uh, here in South Africa against the minority regime. So those were just wars. There was no way anybody could do anything about them because the Africans were dealing with situations which were not uh, solvable by peaceful methods. So those were just wars. But the wars which we are dealing with now are really unjust wars. They are wars which have no good reason. And they are caused by an ideological problem. The ideological problem of emphasizing identity at the expense of interests. Identity either, either tribe or clan, like in Somalia, or religion, like in uh, some of the places. So that is an ideological mistake, to emphasize a pseudo ideology. Because when you say, I am Christian, I am Muslim, so we fight. We fight because of that or like in the, in, in the Middle East, Shia, Sunni, or like in some of the areas, tribes, or race. These are false polarizations. They are polarizations based on uh, uh, wrong reasons. Because what, what does a modern person want? A modern person needs prosperity. You need to answer the question, where does prosperity come from? Does it come from belonging to the same religion? Does it come from belonging to the same tribe? Or does it come from selling my good or my service and I get income and I look after my family? So if you say that prosperity comes from uh, production and exchange of goods and services, then who can buy my products? Most of the time you'll find that the one who can buy your products is actually not a member of your tribe. Because most of the, most of the time the tribes are producing similar products. So the one who can buy my product most likely is, is somebody from the other, the, the other group, different from mine. 
So when you emphasize identity at the, at the expense of interests, you are an enemy of society, you, you are an enemy of progress. When you talk about these wars, I don't normally people here talking about the ideological part. They just talk about war, war, as if they must be condemned because they are ideologically bankrupt. If it's not a just war, then it is a criminal war. It cannot be any, anything else. Now, but however, also you must avoid pessimism. In 1970, Africa was either in war or in a potential war. The whole of Southern Africa was in war. The war in Mozambique, the war in Angola, the war in Namibia, the war in the, here in, 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 uh, against uh, Ian Smith, the war in Biafra, uh, uh, Nigeria. But as you can see, now the whole of Southern Africa is peaceful. No more wars of uh, decolonization. Because what was causing those wars at that time was decolonization. So now where we are having wars are in the other belts where the problem is ideology, bankrupt ideology. Now finally, on the issue of, uh, you asked the question about the, the Taliban's and all that. These groups must be engaged ideologically, not just uh, unprincipled negotiations, <coughs> because you have not, you, you have fought, you have failed to defeat them. Why did you start the war in the first place? What were you fighting for? It, it must be ideologically sorted out. What are the interests of society? The positive interests. And what do you represent? So that we do a serious ideological audit uh, and, and we are able to have principled peace, not just patching up because you have failed to impose your will. Why, why did the war start in the first place? What were you fighting for? U Uganda had a lot of problems because of some groups emphasizing identity. I am, I am, we, we had a problem of Catholics versus Protestants. We had a problem of Christians versus Muslims. We had a problem of the tribes. It was not until we came in the 1960s with the student movement, which rejected uh, uh, this um, uh, polarization. And we said, no, what are the interests of all these people? They want this, they want this, they want this. So we were able to show them that they have got a common interest. Uh, and, and that's how we're able to, 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 to gain the upper hand in terms of thinking, to have a majority of the people looking at how will I get a job, where will I sell my products, uh, to look at interests rather than identity. So Uganda was like that. It's not just South Sudan. What was the problem in Nigeria, Biafra? That was the problem. Even now, when you talk of Boko Haram, what, what is the problem? Sudan, the problem was, was identity. First of all, race. People will say they are Arabs and others Africans. Then, then Muslim, Christian now tribes, because identity goes on descending. You go from race, you go to, 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 to religion, you go to tribe, you go to clan. If you say identity, there is no end. In the end, you end up with families. So that, that's why we must challenge the defective ideology of emphasizing identity. That must be challenged and banished. Well, that's where the problem is coming from. It's not just uh, uh, 
South Sudan. It is in many places. If you don't challenge it, it will be a problem. Thank you. Uh, President Museveni, you will uh, have the honor to close the panel. Well, as, uh, as business, the business can play a very crucial role in changing the polarization in society from being, being vertical, because that's what it is now. When you have got a pre-capitalist society, a society, before, traditional society, you have tribe A here, tribe B here. The, the cleavage is vertical. When you have business, when there is social transformation, <coughs> society changes. You have got a big middle class. Then the structure of society changes. You have employers and employees. Now, issues become different. The arguments are no longer my tribe, your tribe, the arguments are now, I want more salary, I want more less working days. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 cliff, the, 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 the polarization now becomes horizontal, the employer, employee. So the business should be clear about this, that uh, they, they can contribute, because by investing, creating jobs, getting people from the tri tribal areas to the, to, to the factories and, and, and to, the, to the companies, it, it is part of durable peace building. There must be social economic transformation. <laughs> you cannot maintain a pre-capitalist uh, structure of society and you think that you will have peace. It, 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 it is not... Uh, it is not possible. Mm. You must, th that's what happened in Europe. Because if you go to, to Europe, even to, to the time of the French Revolution, 1789, what was the structure of the society? What was the structure of the society by the time of the Renaissance? There was a metamorphosis of society. It changed. That's what must happen here. We must have social metamorphosis. We must have a middle class. A middle class is, is, is more cosmopolitan uh, than, than the tribes. The tribes are parochial. They are you're, they're just looking at your area. Because you don't have interests beyond your village. You are looking after goats. Goats only need one hill. But if I'm producing uh, motorcycles, then I need the whole of, uh, <laughs> of East Africa to sell my motorcycles. So business can be the transformative mm. uh, engine of changing of peace actually. Thank you so much. I, I think that was uh, a very uh, nice note uh, to end uh, on. With prosperity, peace also follows. Uh, when uh, people uh, strive um, for an income, education for their children, uh, they will also uh, be uh, more uh, horizontal uh, in their uh, thinking and not vertical in their thinking. Um, that is a way uh, working towards uh, peace and also silencing uh, the guns uh, like the African Union has uh, stated. I would like to thank uh, this uh, excellent panel uh, for uh, their insight. Uh, I learned a lot, and I think also uh, the participants uh, feel uh, the same. Thank you so much. Thank you.